voice messages. Main menu. If you want your messages now, press 1. To send a vo new voice message. Message from 7 0 7 1 0 6 7 8 0 9 Received yesterday at 9.58 a.m. Hi, good morning. Um, this is Jasmine. I would just like to see if I have more information on how we can be able to help you guys out and volunteer. So if you guys can give us a call back at 657. Received today at 8 o'clock a.m. I mean, the approximate a, list a, of the messages. Uh, volunteering uh, and go to the border on July 27th. Mm -hmm. Can you please um, call me and uh, put me in People don't realize this positive side. All these people that are just out there trying to find a way to participate and to be part of the solution instead of part of the problem. So now I'm going to call some of them back. Hello. Hello, could I speak with Maureen, please? Yes, Maureen. Hello, Maureen. My name is Brother Bobby. I represent Border Angels, and I just listened to your voice message. You're welcome. My vocation is based on serving the poorest of the poor. Um, that's the reason that I've left the United States quite often, to be in third world countries. For me to come back to the United States after being in Peru, um, for me to have a ministry where I feel like I'm satisfied and being nourished and providing the services that I feel God called me to do, I need to be doing things such as the orphanage or working with migrants who have nobody else supporting them, you know, things of that nature. So here we are in the Border Angels Shelter Kitchen, Embajada Migrante, La Cucina de Embajada Migrante. So this was probably breakfast, lunch, probably dinner last night, breakfast this morning, and lunch again. You can see it's barely a kitchen. We do have a stove and an oven that can be utilized. A lot of the stuff are the donations that we receive in San Diego and bring across the border. And a lot of times too, if we get a monetary donation, we'll give it to the shelter so that they can kind of stock up on some of the food items. It's just very makeshift. The structure itself needs a lot of work. We're gonna be doing a remodeling here soon. But watch your step as we come through. Feel free to walk right in because everybody's working. So when I first started working for Border Angels and they came and showed me the shelter, they brought me in rooms such as this and it broke my heart because thinking that this is where all these people have walked, you know, for two months to get to the United States. They end up sleeping in places like this. And at first I thought it was horrible, but now I've met so many people that actually thank God that this exists and they tell me that they'd rather be sleeping here with eight to ten other individuals than be back in the country where they just came from. At least here, we're trying to restore that human dignity and take care of them the best we can. When I see people that are struggling and know that I'm a little better off, then I want to kind of balance the scales out a little bit. Like, I'm not trying to live up here when there's a bunch of people around me living down here. I'm trying to love myself and love my neighbor. I think it's that basic. When you migrate or you leave your origin place, your humanity is being taken away from you. So our job as humanitarians, and, uh, I guess, uh, rescue missionaries, is that just to restore the sense of hope, not necessarily to build on false solutions, but very much.
When you know that everybody's here not for money and not for their own personal gain, but to actually help the world and help our less fortunate brothers and sisters, that's the kind of environment that I want to be in. Those are the type of people that I want to work with. People that are totally poor, 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 desperate, those are the people that I want to be with. I hope to bring some hope to them, let them know that their lives are worth enough for me to want to be there. And not that I'm anything special, but they're not forgotten. You know, they realize that people are still out there in the world thinking of them, wondering how they're living. And then people such as myself, missionaries that actually go and immerse themselves into their lives, I think that helps alleviate some of the pain they're going through. My lifestyle as, as a, a world traveler, that's how I actually came to religious life, is because taking care of three or four young kids in Costa Rica, uh, I came to realize that I would offer my life for these children. I knew that these children's father, he got in a surf accident, he had a metal plate in his head, so he can't take care of them. And so I was like, you know what, I'm going to stick around and make sure they have a good Christmas. And so I took these three, three girls and we went Christmas shopping, and I gave them money to each buy each other a gift. So I said, you're going to buy a gift for her, you're going to buy a gift for her, and you're going to buy a gift for her. And then we'll find something for your dad. So when I realized I had a passion to offer my life up and all the things that I thought were important so that these kids could have a chance, that's when I knew I had to follow this. So this is uh, Miss Perla's house. She rents it so she can take care of some migrants. She has seven rooms. ¿Cuántos años hace eso? Desde So about eight to nine, about nine years she's been doing this to offer a place for people to sleep. Every time someone comes from a different country where they don't have the flag yet, she asks that you either bring a flag from our country or send one to her because she wants to hang them up in the house to show that this is for everyone. This house isn't just for Mexicans or Guatemalans. It's for the people of the world. Qué okay. bueno, muchas gracias. Gracias a todos por venir. Hermano, mucho, okay. mucho gusto. Estamos aquí. Bueno, nos vemos en sí. un mes más o claro. menos. Okay. Okay. Estamos. Muchas gracias por todo, eh. Sí, espérame. For me, it's companionship and community, that feel of community, that the people around you are part of your life and that you're journeying together. And in third world countries, I find more of this going on than in the United States. For selfish reasons, I'm more attracted to the, the true joy that I find in the poor people who are hanging out at the park all day because it's free, that's all they can do. But you know what, the park is packed. And you've got all these families that are there using the basketball hoop or the soccer ball. And it's not about possessions. It's about the family unit. It's about being outdoors and, and you know, with nature. Uh, it's about interacting in a healthy way, playing sports with each other. I'm trying to help bring hope and to let them know that some of the things that they're fighting for, striving for, that they see in the developed countries, don't be fooled. You can never get enough of what you don't need. You know, so it's like when you think through that, the fact you don't need it in the first place, now you've got it, but you start piling it up, you know, like cars and TVs. You can never get enough of them because there's always a new one. There's always a better one. And I've realized in third world countries that a lot of our time and energy is, is focused on the genuine needs and not the wants, such as the car and the television and the materialistic things. Back in the United States at the monastery, I get to share my stories with the brothers. I think they get a lot out of it. This orphanage has been a part of us since 1975. And the fact that I get to come here now and spend 48 hours a week, it means a lot to all of us. Just to see that it's being continued, you know, and I don't know how long I'll be here, but hopefully there's an Augustinian ready to jump in as soon as I'm reassigned or have to go to, you know, a different ministry.